We love traveling, mainly focusing on our passions of scuba diving and skiing, but also experiencing our little planet's great cultures, people and wildlife when we can. Then 2020 happened, and just like lots of others around the world, we had a rethink. We spent some time travelling closer to home, which reminded us of the wonders right here on our doorstep. So we bought a 2012 Sprinter van and we're making it into a little home that we can use to explore nearer home and maybe even a little further afield. We're Sarah and Ben. Welcome to our journey to van life. This first series is about how we converted our van, why we chose to do it this way and quite possibly why we shouldn't have done some of it the way we did. We are not going to go into the detail about how to calculate your solar power wattages, how to cut holes for your windows or insulate your van because quite frankly there's lots of really good videos out there showing you that stuff. We should know, we've watched most of them. So, thanks very much for being here with us. To follow our journey from how we turn this into this, please like, subscribe and click the little notification bell. And we'll see you out there on the road sometime. When you buy a van like this, it's nice to know some of its history. There are a few clues on this one because I know that Babcock work very closely with emergency services. And this was clearly some sort of maintenance vehicle. Later, when I was removing the rear bumper, I found an SD card, so I thought I'd have a look to see what was on it. I found hundreds of photographs of damage on police vehicles, and here's a picture of our van in a police car park, as well as lots of photos of broken wing mirrors. So now to start stripping it all down so that we've got a blank canvas to start with. It's actually relatively easily, but it is leaving behind this sticky spoke too soon. It comes off in pieces. So I think because it's quite brittle, what I'm going to do is warm it up with a heat gun and see if it comes off a bit more easily. cables ran behind this ducting all the way along so I spent half a day stripping out everything that wasn't standard Mercedes wiring. We started at the front taking out there was a leisure battery underneath the seat there, there was an inverter so I was stripping it all out all the way back and I got right the way to the back having cut everything out, removed everything and just up here there was a wire I was cutting and I suddenly realised that wire is going to this reversing camera. So what I'd actually done is stripped out all the wiring for the reversing camera. So that then took another couple of hours to replace the wiring. It's not fitted up properly yet. All the way back to this handy reversing camera up here, which now works again. So one lesson learned. A bit like the measure twice, cut once lesson. Have a look at the other end of the wire that you're cutting before you take it all out. Would have saved me a couple of hours worth.
After taking the flooring out we then needed to make good any areas of surface rust and treat it so that it wasn't a problem in the future. And then there were lots of holes from where the racking and the floor had been bolted down so they all needed welding up and treating properly and then rust proofing underneath the van. So we've converted it from the double seat to the single seat in the front. But what that means is that because now the seat belt on the double seat isn't connected to the system, there's a sensor warning coming up on the dashboard that says that the SRS or the supplementary restraint system has got a fault. And that's because the seat belt auto tensioner device isn't connected to the car anymore. What I've done then is found the wire which was connected to the seat belt on the old double double seat. And after a bit of Googling on the internet, I found that if you take a, I think it's 1.3 ohm resistor and connect it into that plug, connect the, the ends of the resistor into there, obviously shortened to suit. And then once that's together, through the port, I've got this sensor or this connector for the ODB port scanner, which connects to an app on the mobile phone. Which, in theory, I should be able to reset the fault warning. Good morning. So, today's task is fitting the side pods. Now this is the finished article, the side pods fitted. You see the extra thickness that they give you there to the van inside the van you have this extra distance from here right out to there so an extra four inches on either side to so that you can sleep sideways across the van that's the reinforcements cut out at the top and bottom now i'm going to holes are drilled in the corners and i'm going to have a go with this air saw. Seems, <coughs> Seems alright. Let's see how far we get with this. Right, saw works great. You've probably heard though, the compressor's kicked in straight away. That means my compressor's not really got enough capacity for the air to provide this, so I'm going to switch over to the jigsaw. Or maybe this reciprocating saw. to um, clean up the edges with the flat disc and get glue. So we're going to put some primer on to make it ready for the Sikaflex glue. Paint this around the edges.
side pods from Blackrock Outfitters, a company I found on YouTube and they're on Facebook as well. They're not too far away from us so I was able to collect them, save on postage costs. And at £495 for the pair, they're pretty cost effective compared to some of the other options. And they give you about another good 6 to 8 inches width on the van, so sleeping sideways should be no problem at all. This is where I learned that when you're trying to make videos to show people what you're doing on your van, it's best not to leave your stepladder in between the camera and the work that you're doing. But you'll get the idea that I've put ratchet straps all the way around the van, attached to the wheels at both sides so they're really strong, and then I've put some lengths of 3x2 across the, the fiberglass of the side pod to spread the load of, from the strap and to give it a bit more thickness to give the strap a bit more tension and just tightening it down not really strong but just enough to give it some tension as the glue dries once it's in place this is the join in between the side of the van and the inside of the fiberglass side pod here you can see the step which is where the van sort of sits in a little bit so you need a wider thickness of glue between the pod and the side of the van just to take up all the space and it looks like it's got a good seal I'm happy with that. Well, when I first got it there was the beacons and lights on the top you see the ones at the front are still there removing those though has left these holes so I'm in the process now of repairing those you can see all the holes from inside and later on if I get to it at the front is where these bolts come through and this cable and this cable and these bolts all there fixing those beacons onto the roof all got to be removed and made good so that we've got a nice solid watertight roof trying to do this so that it's a strong repair that can then be filled over by the, the body shop when it goes for painting. Now I'm sure there's an awful lot of people out there who know a lot more about welding than I do and the job that I'm doing here is far from pretty but hopefully it'll be strong. This is a close-up of one of the holes on the back of the van where some amber flashing beacons were fitted. So I've ground it down just with a wire brush to take the paint off, made this little patch for the larger one in the middle and the smaller ones I'm just going to fill in with weld. It is small enough to be able to do that quite effectively so this is it welding and then this is it after grinding it down to make it relatively smooth afterwards. It's good enough I think for the body shop to be able to put some filler on and smooth it off and do a decent job. Well that's these holes towards the back of the roof more or less done. What I'm going to do is once they're sanded down spray them with some etch primer and some normal primer just to give them a bit of protection for the next probably about four weeks before it's in the body shop. Obviously it's outside here in the open so using normal primer on this it very quickly rusts over because of it being porous. But once these are done I'll then move down towards the front, take off that last beacon at the front and those lights and do the same job down there. We're in the holes at the front of the van now that uh, were left by the beacons down there and these I've decided to cut out the pieces of metal because you see how how bad the pitting is around those holes so thank you to whoever fitted these quite badly because I've had to cut out panels that cover the whole of the piece that's what the inside looked like lots of rust so I want to cut out all of that rust and put in brand new panels all of this is work 
that's preparing the van for being able to go away to be resprayed. So you've seen us stripping out a lot of stuff, fixing some of the rust on the body shell, filling in the holes. And in the next episode you'll see us making a few more preparations and then it'll be ready for painting. Do please stay tuned, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode very soon.